Oh, Steve and Larson, don't you dare be sour. Clap for yourselves and feel the power. Yes. And all you people out there, you're watching Going In Raw with Steve Larson. <laughs> Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available rubber podcasts can be found, of course, taped live at Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. We're going to talk about SmackDown here in just a little bit. However, during the broadcast tonight of SmackDown, Fightful's Sean Ross Sapp uh, broke the news. That NXT, the NXT brand, was hit with a fairly large number of releases. Uh, the names that have been released are Bobby Fish, Mercedes Martinez, Leon Ruff, Tyler Rust, Ari Sterling, Asher Hale, uh, Giant Zangier, Stefan Smith, Jake Atlas, Kona Reeves, Zachariah Smith, and... Probably, most shockingly of all, Bronson Reed, former North American champion. He just uh, uh, lost that title a couple weeks ago to Isaiah Swerve Scott. He mm -hmm. had a match on main event, which many speculated was a bit of an audition for main roster. And now he has been released by the company. Um, yeah. So yeah. that was a lot to take in during SmackDown. Uh, yes. So... We are gonna, we're gonna definitely, obviously, cover SmackDown tonight. Uh, it it was kind of difficult to concentrate it on the show. It was, it and, was during the uh, the Bianca, the Bianca Belair Zelina Vega match. I was I was going through Twitter, and then I saw that Sean Sean reported that uh, Bronson Reed had been released, and I texted you about it, and then I go to his, his Twitter, and there's a bunch of names uh, that had also been released, and it's. It's shocking, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Bronson Reed, yeah, most shocking of it all because he was just North American champion. He seemed like he was on the precipice of potentially getting called up to the main roster. But then you got Jake Atlas, who's involved pretty often on NXT. Leon Ruff used to be North American champion. Mm -hmm. Bob Fish just had a match this week against Roderick Strong. Mm -hmm. Mercedes Martinez, I think she's she might be hurt. But before that, she was involved a lot. Ari Sterling and Asher Hale are both on 205 Live fairly often. Um, I think Kona Reeves rec recuperating from injury. Mm -hmm. um, it, well, let's, let's go this this bit from PW Insider because um, in their write-up uh, on the releases, they are reporting that, quote, there has been a lot of talk internally of major changes for the NXT brand, including a new logo, new lighting, a focus on younger talents, and a different format to the TV shows. This house clean tonight appears to be part of those changes. I mean, if the idea is to, you know, if internally, if NXT is viewed as development, developmental brand, as we have heard, you know, like uh, Vince and company have more or less given up on the idea of, of, of making NXT in any way on par with Raw and SmackDown. It's, it's a developmental uh, territory to prepare wrestlers to be brought to the main roster. And if you're going to focus on younger talent, then why do you get rid of Leon Ruff, Tyler Rust, Ari Sterling, Asher Hale? Jake Atlas, Bronson Reed. I mean, that's younger talent. That's younger talent. That is, especially in the case of Leon Ruff and Bronson Reed, that's already been established on your NXT brand. Those are those are wrestlers you can build this, you know, whatever reconstituted NXT around. I don't I don't disagree with that. However, also, and I mentioned this during the pre-show, they have a breakout tournament with eight other, and this is what I said as well, is that this is the unfortunate but logical conclusion to, or result rather, two years of hoarding talent, of trying to keep talent away from their competition. Somebody here in our chat here, and I apologize, oh, Adam Beveridge in our chat here, mm -hmm. noted that WWE, uh, and I'm assuming Adam is correct here, has released 52 wrestlers this year and we're only in August. Um, what you're saying is totally true. Leon Ruff is a, a world-class talent at his yeah. age. I don't know how old he is, but he looks young. 
and he's amazing. Bronson Reed is amazing. I mean, I think all these people that we noted have talent, right? Yeah. But the ones that we've been most exposed to, we can see we can see what kind of talent they have. Yeah. Leon Ruff's twenty five. Okay. Yeah. Um, he'll do great things. Yeah. You know, absolutely. and I hope everybody finds their place in the landscape. I really do, mm-hmm. and I have no doubt yes. they will. Yeah. Um, that being said, they hoarded talent. And so you have, they just released 12 people. Well, they have eight participating in a tournament that haven't been touched. And they're all immensely talented as well. They have an entire men's division and a half there. Um, so they, they they have the people. Um, it's just, this is unfortunately what happens when a company changes direction from Hey, let's take everybody we can. And on the upside to that, most of the, you know, all these people got a regular paycheck honing their craft at a professional world-class facility with world-class coaches. Most of them, or a lot of them, got to increase their own personal brand. So now that they're on the free market, now that indie wrestling is opening back up, you got AEW, you got Impact, you got MLW, you got New Japan, you got all Ring sorts of, of promotions. Sorry, Ring of Honor, absolutely. Um, indie promotions are opening back up. So their value is now increased, and that's a good thing. Losing their job, not a good thing, but at least we're not in the middle of lockdown here in the States. I know there are areas that are that are. Yeah, and hopefully it will go back to that given the current trajectory of And hopefully we won't, you know. But you know, uh, us going through the experience of being laid off. It's awful. It's terrible, and there's a great deal of uncertainty about what step to take next what you're going to do next um you know and especially for for uh zachariah smith giant zangier uh the talents that haven't been on tv as often or at all you're right it's tougher for them to say all right well now i can go back on the indies and use my my this brand i developed because they haven't had the opportunity to develop the brand. You're, you're you know they have to go somewhere right. else and start all over again mm-hmm. with the experience so, of being at a world-class performance yeah it center. helps but they don't have the name value of jake atlas sure. or, no they don't or, they or don't. jonah rock or yeah. leon ruff or, or mercedes martinez and so they have to kind of start all over again yeah and then uh we were talking about during the kickoff our pre-show that uh shaz mckenzie brought up a good point on twitter that for uh talent international talent they got to worry about the visa situation. Yeah. WB sponsored their visa, their work visa, so they could work here. I don't know what kind of window they have yeah. to work that all out. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's you know, I, I would imagine a great source of anxiety for wrestlers who are trying to work all that out, trying to reestablish their careers, you know, maybe try to find someone else to sponsor their visa. You know, what's the paperwork like for that? What's the process all, uh, of that all about? How much time does that take? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it, every, basically everybody in this list. Yeah. They have elevated themselves just by stepping foot in NXT in the WWE performance center, because they've by and large, most of these names have gotten to establish a brand that's been on national television. Um, but you know, there's still the process of, of getting from that situation to whatever the next situation is going to be. And I'm sure for a lot of people, that's going to cause some anxiety. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't want to undersell that. Um, you know, you and I were in similar situations. We were able to, you know, build our own, if you will, brand, the Stephen Larson thing. Yeah, totally. And for that year b- between getting laid off and uh, and really sort of having going in raw become a thing, it was it sucked. It's like I don't like, you know, oh, man, like, you know, and we were luck- like we, we caught a lot of lucky breaks along the way. Um, you know, we had some people looking out for us, uh, like within Machinima still saying, Hey, we know we laid you off, but you want to come make some money as freelancers. Like, okay, well, I guess we have to. And it gave us time to do what we can, what we did. Um, yeah. so, so yeah, there's a lot of anxieties that go into it. And I, a hundred percent, my heart goes out to those people mm-hmm. to, to have to deal with that stuff now. Absolutely. For the people, like you said, that didn't get to establish their brand on TV, um, to give themselves a better shot. Yeah, it's going to be harder, and and that's awful. My heart goes out to those people. Um, you know, hopefully what WWE saw in them, other companies will see as well. You know, if MLW's out there and say, hey, you know, who's this person? 
uh, you know, giant, what was his name? Giant Zangier. Zangier. Yeah. You know, WWE saw something in him. Let's bring him in, see if we can see that in him too, you know? Um, so, yeah, absolutely. My heart goes out to these people. Same. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, let's let's talk briefly about, let's, let's assume that this PW Insider bit about kind of a rebranding of sorts for the NXT brand. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I guess if they want to complete the transformation of NXT as potential third brand under the WB umbrella to pro- predominantly developmental brand, and they want to kind of make that obvious, then I guess, yeah, new logo, new lighting, uh, a different format, I guess. Maybe what they were planning on doing with the Evolve show, they're just going to do with with NXT now, I don't know. On the USA um, net, like they have a million dollar deal with USA. I know. It, it sounds like that's like, you know, you're in 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 sports parlance, it's a rebuilding phase, but like not in the way that we typically think of NXT in a rebuilding phase, which well, is like here's, suffering a couple call ups. So well the thing about rebuilding, if you're a sports franchise and you're rebuilding, you you, you trade up trade away all your valuable assets to accumulate future assets essentially, but the idea that now we're no good in a matter of two, three, four years. We will be super competitive. Yeah. If what they're doing with NXT is we're going to transition from third brand, maybe essentially, at least that's the goal, to purely developmental program, uh, you see like the first third of what you normally associate with a sports franchise. You see the very beginning of the developmental process, and they get called up to the main roster, and then NXT. You know, new talents there will have to start that developmental process all over again. You don't get to see the full arc of the process, mm-hmm. you know, like the 76ers employed so famously. You don't get to see that whole arc in NXT. You have to follow. I mean, most people watch NXT, probably watch main roster. So I guess it can, but within the confines of NXT, you don't see that whole arc happen. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, it's it's OK. Let's say let's assume, for example, well, let's assume they're going to do this. Who do they keep around like? If they're gonna, I would have said Broad Street. <laughs> you know, right? I would have said Jake Atlas. Yeah. Even like Asher Hale, he was like fighting Darby Allen and Evolve in the last days. Yeah. Um. But okay, they they keep the breakout guys. Is there gonna be number? This is a reality. We're in August. Between now and and December thirty first, we're gonna see more. Oh, yeah. Up and down the roster, by Sadly, the way. Sadly, yes, we are going to see more, yes. Um, but, like, what do you do with Champa, who has said, I don't really want to go to main roster? Um, what do you do with, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, Adam Cole is literally supposed to have a meeting tonight with, with Vince. There so is, that. there is, there is, there are a number of talents in NXT who are, if NXT is going to be strictly developmental, are are too big for that version of NXT. Ciampa, Gargano, Cole, uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly. There's a, like the more established main event, Pete Dunne, established main event talent in NXT. If NXT takes a step back to being a purely developmental brand, th- there's a, that layer of talent is too big for that. You know? Yeah. But, you know, like, if Gargano gets called up to the main roster, what is he going to do? Like, is Vince going to be able to appreciate what he can bring to the programming? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, could 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 Vince see Daniel Bryan potential in Johnny Gargano? Because that's fair. The only thing that the only thing that I could really think of that they can do is bring the cruiserweight title back to Raw and bring guys. You have Gargano, Kushida, Kushida, yeah. um, uh, uh, Kyle O'Reilly. At if 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 Adam Cole needs to have in writing. Mm-mm, I'm not doing the cruiserweight title. We're not doing that. Okay. Yeah. Daniel Bryan playing with the big guys. I can play with the big guys too. Um, so you got those guys, Roderick strong, of course. Mm-hmm. So you, you have there with the up. I mean, I don't know about champ. I don't know. Champ vying for a cruiserweight title. would be just weird. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what you do with champ. I don't. He's like the one. He's like Matthew McConaughey and uh, Daisy Confused. He's just hanging out of the performance center. The old guy, the weird old guy there. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, you have the, the bottom line is you have an NXT basically at the top of the NXT card minus uh, Joe and and Cross. That top of the card is a world class potentially cruiserweight division. You know, it's a killer cruiserweight division. It's just weird to me that like NXT, I find it funny that NXT, it's like 
you built this thing and once a quarter, five times a year or so, you've got the buzziest show of whatever weekend. The buzziest show that will sell out arenas five times a year. You could tour 1,200. This boggles my There are things that they can easily do with NXT to boost up its profile, to boost up its ratings, and it doesn't do it. It's the weirdest thing to me. It's honestly bizarre. Yeah. And then, you know, I wonder part of it, too, is if you're a WB fan, you got to sit through, you'll sit through three hours of Raw, two hours of SmackDown, and then and with with brands, Raw and SmackDown, that have been well-established and you've known for the better part of 20-plus years, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you got NXT. Is it a situation where WB has, to a degree, oversaturated their market with programming? And you know, uh, people who don't watch wrestling for a living, like us, we have to watch everything. But people who are, are who don't have to do that, be a bit more picky and choosy, or want to be more picky and choosy about what what wrestling they watch. You know, like, do they just not find the time, have the time, have the desire to, to follow NXT on a regular basis? You know, is it is it such a difference in terms of presentation, in terms of style of wrestling, from what has been established on the main roster that it's just not to their liking? I don't know. Oh, are you asking why more people aren't watching NXT right now? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Why? Right. Maybe if 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 Vince and company are, have have some numbers, some analytics, leading them some way in terms of uh, focus grouping things, seeing okay, this version, this iteration of NXT, is it connecting? Why as widely as we want? Why not? All right, this is the the data we've gotten back. What do we do now? I just don't know. I'm trying to put put it all together. I because I don't know, dude. I would be. I honestly, you would think that a billion dollar company would have that. Has anything you've ever heard lead you to believe? And I'm not, I, I know this sounds like a joke question, but I, oh, no, I, I, I ask this yeah, with totally. sincerity. Is there anything that leads you to believe they operate by any, any data beyond what happens in Vince McMahon's gut? You know, I'll go back to that. That story Bruce Pritchard told about by or getting those people that did the sledgehammer music video <laughs> to do the pre the the intro to Raw or whatever, and so I think there's people within the company that will approach it from a more analytical or data based point of view, where they you know they'll they'll take uh, they'll get a focus group, have them watch everything, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, what did you like, what didn't you like, what worked, what did, so on and so forth. And try to find a reason why people who watch Raw and SmackDown don't watch NXT. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's mm-hmm. what it would seem like a business, a smoothly run business mm-hmm. would do. Yeah. If you have a brand that's not getting the numbers you want it to, especially in relation to your two other brands, try to ascertain why. Yeah. You know, I, I, would, be, I, yeah. I would be surprised if people within the WWE umbrella whose job is to do that. Problem is, it all gets funneled up to Vince. And if he sees it and thinks it's BS, mm-hmm. then it's out the window and all the, all the, the all that work is gone. Yeah. Let's take a quick break here to get a word in from the sponsor of today's show, Better Help. Several years ago, while dealing with severe anxiety, I learned the importance of talking to a therapist, but also discovered that it can be extremely difficult to find the right person to talk to. Today, Better Help is providing a safe and private online environment where your needs will be assessed and you'll be matched with your own licensed personal therapist. BetterHelp isn't a crisis line, nor is it self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online, all without having to ever sit in another uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is dedicated to facilitating great therapeutic matches. Send your counselor messages at any time or schedule regular weekly phone or video sessions. They made it free and easy to change therapists if needed. And you don't have to limit yourself to counselors in your area. BetterHelp services are available worldwide, so you can find the expertise you need regardless of location. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a Going In Raw listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash raw. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. And before we get back to the show, let's get a word from our sponsor, Liquid Death. So Larson... Yeah, we're right in the middle of the dog days of summer, man. It is hot out there. But yeah, when, it is. when I'm on the verge of heat overload, I reach for a can of liquid death and put my thirst down like a dog. Yeah, this this 
may look like a beer, but it's not. Inside this awesome looking tall boy can is 16.9 ounces of mountain water that will brutally murder your thirst. Hence the name on the can. Uh, and while the can does look cool, what makes it even better is that aluminum cans are infinitely recyclable, unlike plastic bottles, which just mostly end up in landfill. See, Steve, plastic bottles, they're a money loser for recycling centers, while aluminum cans actually make them some money. That's right. Also, Liquid Death donates 10% of their profits from every can sold to help bring death upon plastic pollution. So if you want to put your thirst down like a dog during these dog days of summer, go to liquiddeath.com slash G-I-R to get a free set of cozies with your first order of any case of water. Or grab some at your neighborhood Whole Foods or 7-Eleven. There's some interesting little uh, tidbits here in chat from people who are trying to answer that question for you personally. I have my own answer, and it's sort of in line with a lot of these people here. Um, DLW says, I'm not watching NXT because it's presented as inferior to Raw and SmackDown. He says, I also, I watch Raw SmackDown Dynamite. It's a big enough commitment. Uh, Red Beard and Bluegrass says, I used to love NXT on the network and enjoyed it after the move to USA, but as call-ups continued to get chopped at the knee and AEW continued to just be a more enjoyable show, I barely cared about NXT for a long time, and now the brand is buried, in my opinion. For me personally, as as the, the resident uh, NXT stan, although I can mm-hmm. sort of add a former to that, I'll be honest. I mean, I've, I've talked about this over the past week or two. It's like AEW has sort of gone out of the way apparently to to book their show the way I like. It's they've they've signed Alistair Black and used him in a main event role in a really killer spot. Um, Black massing Cody out into retirement. I mean, yeah. what more Steve story could you? Pop? I, did, I couldn't even fantasy book that. No, that speaks to you on so many levels. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And then the idea of signing CM Punk is literally just to get me on board, right? Oh, yeah. Steve thinks he's going to be in NXT. I don't think so. And I'm doing I'm firmly. I'm firmly on board with AEW these days. I, I look. I enjoy what WWE is doing. I some of the stuff like Raw can be insufferable sometimes, but I, I like a lot of what they got going on. NXT is one of those things. In 2019, it was like holy crap. Survivor Series. That the was best stuff out there, sick. Yeah. That was yeah. awesome. It was some of the best stuff out there, and they were proud about it. You know. Ever since then. And it's exceedingly so in the last couple months. It's like there's some cool stuff in NXT. Hit Row's cool. Uh, mm-hmm. The Way is good mm-hmm. stuff. But then they're gutting that. Who knows if Indy Hartwell is going to still be part of The Way if they're going to continue or, this story. Or Austin Theory. Yeah. Austin Theory hasn't been seen in a couple weeks. Who knows if he's going to be back or if he's going to main roster. Um, and then just the, the, the stories have been sort of less than – great it's like you look back at halloween havoc and it was like holy crap what a fun show Mm -hmm. like that was a lot of fun and then and either tip we talk about this on the nxt recap they go through creative cycles that seem to correspond with call-ups and development and developing other people for all i know look for all i know in four months when duke hudson is 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 in full you know going full steam ahead it's going to be a creative wonderland again. Something does feel different this time around. With yes. the carry and cross stuff, with losing to AEW in the one in Wednesday Night Wars, being moved to Tuesdays, at first was like, wow, Tuesday, great. Something feels different, especially with the cross stuff. And then, Well, here's the yeah. thing. Like, right after they moved to Tuesdays, it felt like they had a bit of a spark back. They were reinvigorated, yeah. It did feel that way. And it's just kind of been, it's kind of been since... You know, we heard about executives going to the performance center, scouting some potential call ups, the cross stuff, him losing, have him having the, uh, the the dark matches, main event match, losing to Hardy on Raw. It seems to be these last two or three weeks where maybe with so much uncertainty regarding who's going to be left in NXT, you know, at, maybe at this point, at that point already, there's internally discussions about what NXT is going to look like going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so with that level of uncertainty, Maybe you feel a bit hamstrung in terms of what you you can or are willing to put out there creatively, because in a week or two's time, half people involved in those stories could be gone. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, 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 the only certainty right now seems to be in NXT is that Joe's going to get that title off Cross at Takeover, mm-hmm. and any, any, after that, then they're going to start figuring out everything else. That kind of mm-hmm. how it feels like NXT as we know it now is going to kind of limp to Takeover. I think it would probably be a great show. The card is stacked. It is. It's going yeah, to be a fun show. Yeah. But I feel like 
creatively to a degree. They're kind of limping the takeover. They'll get that out of the way, and then they'll sit down, take a breath, and say, all right, how are we going to proceed going forward next? It'll because, be yeah, yeah. It'll be sorry, very interesting to see what happens after after that. Absolutely. Um, there are some notes here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Cody Miles said, "Looks like more releases just announced." And hmm. I'm taking a look here. Sean is in the Sean Ross app is in the middle. Who was breaking all this stuff? Um, Desmond Troy uh, has been released. Okay. okay. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other here. Um, so yeah, while we monitor this, we'll sort of, you know, keep an eye on this, keep one eye on this while we, uh, continue the show and, uh, and, and, and review SmackDown. But yeah, there's a lot of questions about the Mm -hmm. future of NXT at this point. Um, it'll be, it'll be interesting. And maybe, I mean, maybe the, the actual product, if it finds, if maybe maybe part of the issue now, maybe part of what we've been seeing, maybe part of uh, the reason for the rebrand is because there are expectations with talent on NXT that are then going to the main roster. Maybe they want to do this a different way instead of having a bunch of people where it's like, okay, well, these people are getting invested in people who now at this point have been in NXT for a couple of years now, and they're going to be sent to, to, to main roster and be completely different. And that's why people are tuned out. Maybe they just want a brand new crop of kids of, of wrestlers so that people can track their progress over four years and then worry about that when they sell the company in 2024. Um, so, that that could be the case. Maybe maybe Vince is tired of the push and pull with Triple H, and the the you know the idea that hey, NXT is where you guys develop, and as far as Vince is concerned, we get a clean slate because that seems to be the thing with NXT is like oh, you know oh well, look at this guy look what we could do with him let's put it make him into a brand new thing, and then it's like wait why are we watching NXT because the, you're just doing that to our people maybe they're just like okay well NXT is going to be more of an island now of developmental and they can pick them you know fresh i don't know i mean i'm just sort of spitballing here maybe i don't know either maybe it's too maybe there's too much of a maybe they think that it's the expectation by fans that it's a third brand a proper brand is too much to deal with. So they're like, no, it's not a third brand. And you know how much it's not a third brand? We're going to eliminate everybody. Uh, we're going to bring them all to main roster, everybody who's been there for a couple of years, and we're just going to start from scratch as a reality show or as, as a competition <laughs> show. They're going to do that again. Oh, gosh, I hope not. I don't know. Yeah, hey, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what happens the next couple of months. Um you know, like at, at, on the episode of NXT after Takeover, is that is that when they're gonna do the rebrand? You know, mm-hmm, yeah, hit the reset mm-hmm. button, or wait know. till the draft. You know, when they'll they'll draft a lot of the call ups. Yeah, hit the reset button. Then don't know, don't know, don't know at all. A lot of uncertainty right now. Anyways, let's. I guess we can dive into SmackDown. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and and do our best to to recap it. Even though about halfway through the show was completely focused on it on other things, uh, <laughs> Sasha Banks came out first. Oh, anyways, you want to do a uh, 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 in a nutshell thoughts yeah. on SmackDown? Yeah, I thought it was you know it was fine. Uh, you know, I mean, g- given what we had to deal with, you know, like I said, we we got we got Finn the way we want Finn. You know, and he stood tall against Roman. He shoved him. Uh, out of the ring as Roman disrespected him to sort of close out SmackDown. He single-handedly took out the Usos and then uh, and then the the Bloodline uh, put the hurting on him. They smashed him. So it does seem like, unfortunately, it seems like he's going to lose to Cena before he loses to Roman Reigns. If that's going to be the sequence of events, um, well, ideally, what you do is 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 well, I was I was kind of half expecting Cena to come out and make the save tonight for Finn, and then it's a tag match. Finn and Cena versus the Usos or something next week. See, I figured it was going to be the Mysterios that would help his ass this week because then they can get some some of that momentum that Ray was talking about, and next week we'd get six-man. Um, 
I don't know. I thought I, if I'm not mistaken, so according to, I, I thought I read this on Sean Ross Sapp's uh, Twitter that Cena was there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they did probably wrestling a dark match. Yeah, probably. I don't understand. I mean, contractually speaking, maybe there's like, oh, we don't need we we can't. You know, we're saving these dates. But I'm like, wait a second, hold on a second. If he's there, you don't use, use him. him. Really? Use you, him? You don't like you don't do that. Don't use you do him. that. You use it. That's why I thought. That's why I thought have have uh, Uso start beating down on Finn. Cena comes out to make the save. You can work on the story between Cena and Finn. So you have Cena lose to Roman at SummerSlam, and then on a SmackDown after that, Finn finally says, all right, Cena, you know, gun fingers to you. I'm here for my pound of flesh. They have a match. Finn gets the Cena rub. He goes over. Cena, Cena can rub. go off. Cena can go off and do more movies or TV shows, promote Peacemaker or whatever. Oh, he's got that Argyle movie he's shooting next. Yeah, shoot Argyle. He'd go off and do that. Yeah. Finn gets the rub beating Cena. And then he can start a program with Rome. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Through the fall. Yeah. Oh, Jorge D did say that Cena wrestled in a dark match. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, otherwise, I thought it was fine. I mean, I think that the, the Zelina Vega stuff is silly, given that she's won two matches in the past yeah. two years, one of yeah. which was a mixed tag match with and Andrade. Yeah. Let's talk about this. These championship contender matches are out of control. They're out of control. Everything now is a championship contender match. You had Nakamura, who already pinned Apollo Crews last week in a tag match in a championship contender match. Then you got uh, Bianca accepting Zelina Vega's challenge for a title match. But Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville are like, well, we can't ratify that contract yet. So That's guess what? That's a new thing, too, ratifying contracts. I can't stand it. Because um, it seems like no one on TV in kayfabe knows what, how a contract is actually ratified no, and executed. Clearly we we saw that last week. Yeah. But anyways, we're like, well, we haven't done what we got to do with the contract yet. So if you win tonight, the, then you will earn a title shot down the line. That's a championship contender match. I am sick of it. I'm I'm sick I'm, of it. I, I'm over it. And I expected it on raw, but SmackDown, I thought you were better than this. I really did. I know how lazy do you have to be to try to set up a title program? that's have it say, Oh, we're going to have this, this individual challenge for this belt. How are we going to set that up? Have him beat the champion in a match. Can is we, it a title match? No. They get the title match after they already beat him. Can we please have one of the friendos who might be more uh, literate in the Something to Wrestle with Bruce, Bruce Pritchard podcast? Think of some episodes or find some sound bites of him discussing the concept of not giving away the match before the match happens. Right? Like, isn't that a thing? You don't give away yeah. the match before the match happens. You don't exactly. do the match by setting it up that's, with the match. That's why Nakamura pin and cruise is like, that's how you do it. You have ta- that's like how they do it in New Japan. You have a tag yeah. match. Someone pins the champion in the tag match. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then from that point on, the person who pinned the champ says, well, I pinned you. So I'm going after your title. And then you build and then you have the actual title match, the one on one match for the actual title. After you build to it, you don't have that match. You don't do the not title match, and then build the story up to the title match. We've already seen the match, right? Doesn't like, make any sense. Can somebody give me a solid example? Like I don't know, man. I got to go back through the Attitude Era, the Ruthless Aggression Era. I got to see that, like, any examples of this kind of stuff. You know, it's Where, happened on occasion through yeah, the years. You, isn't it usually like you know the heel will say, "Oh." I'll give you a shot, but you got to beat me first. It's it's always there's always like a setup for it. It's just not just part of the normal program now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean that's what it is now, and it's like it, it, I don't remember it ever being part of just the normal programming of WWE or wrestling or whatever. And it's like, oh yeah, we got a championship. It's just another weird Vince thing where yeah, no, let's give him the match now. It's such a weird logical con- like illogical concept to wrap my head around them backstage. Well, uh, we're going to have him do the match to build to the match. Like, I want to hear that conversation between Conrad and Bruce. Bruce, why, why would you have him fight before the pay-per-view on free TV? Well, you, you, you want him to have the match before they have the match. You got to have him have the match to set up the match. You got to have the match. You got to show them that they can beat him by having the match. No, but you got to. I want you to do that in a tag match, Bruce. And it's just so, it's so like now, it's so like a fad with Vince 
That's the thing that bugs me. It's just a whim, and it's clear yeah. as day that it's a whim. Yeah, three or four weeks, it'll be gone. Yeah, and then you won't like even that. hear his bitch about it because it won't even be a thing. And there'll be yep. some other new weird whim. What's going to be the I new know. whim, Larson? What's the new whim? We've had two out of three falls it's because he didn't like having wrestling during commercials. Uh, there was another one. I always forget the other one. There was another weird whim that he had. Maybe chat will know what it is. Well, well there was the, uh, the the brand to brand invitational. The brand to brand invitational. That, that was, was another whim. whim. Yeah, that was like a ratings boost whim. Yeah, that was like, oh, this will um, do it. Branded four per quarter. Oh, but no, now there's five. Oh, a sixth one has arisen. What's the next whim? Yeah, the wild it's, card it's, finals. That was more just like a mini paper. That was a themed episode. It's so hard to try to 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 predict what a a, a, a madman's going to do. Raw something. Underground was totally a whim. We'll try. That, that was Raw Shane's. Under. That was Shane's idea, though, wasn't it? Wasn't that something? Yeah, Shane it was. It was more. It was more like a half-assed attempt to placate Shane. Yeah, yeah, I have an idea. Retribution Smack- was a whim. The SmackDown Top Ten. That was the best. The one week SmackDown Top Ten. It was a week. It was a week. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, we'll, we'll go Some ahead. Some days and- it's pretty shocking. This company is still in business. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> dude. Listen to that pipe bomb. CM Punk was speaking truth. Oh uh, yeah, he knew so- what he was talking about. Boss time opened SmackDown. Do, 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 do. Sasha had some mania level gear on, by the way. Looked amazing. Yeah. yeah. She says, uh, she gets on the mic, says, I came back for my spotlight. I deserve it. I created it. And no one is going to steal it again. And then they cut to a recap of her turning on Bianca last week and a great shot of a fan yelling, no, in slow motion. Uh, so she says, uh, last week she exposed Bianca. She's been watching Bianca make mistake after mistake, and I saved her last week when Carmella and Zelina Vega were beating her down to make a statement that uh, Bianca would be nothing without me. She says any other athlete would have thanked her for that WrestleMania moment, but Bianca dissed her, so she came back to make her pay. I understand it's not kayfabe because it was at the ESPYs. They brought it, she, Bianca brought it up last week. Yeah. Well, Sasha brought up tonight too, mm-hmm. but at the at the SB Awards when they accepted their their award, I mean, I, I don't know what the exchange like. They talked to each other during their acceptance speech. Was there an acceptance speech? I like, would. I, I want to watch that and and see if there's any sort of uh, uh, sh- signs of gratitude from one party to the well, other. Well, here's the thing, though. I think the kayfabe ESPYs are different from the shoot ESPYs. So the ESPYs happened yeah, in the WWE that's... universe. But yes. they were much more contentious than the real ESPYs. <laughs> Bruce. Like they're backstage, like fighting yeah. tug of war over, over the, the SP. SP. Yeah. Kayfabe. Bruce, what is this shit? Uh, so Bianca comes out, says, You think I'm nothing without you? Last time I checked, you were literally begging me to choose me to fight you at the Rumble. Uh, you don't want credit. You just don't want me to shine, but I always shine. And Bianca gets in the ring. Sasha leaves. She hops on the commentary table. Bianca says, If you want a shot, it's on. And then Zelina Vega comes out, the, the Channel 5 news team, and says, no, this is not happening. Bianca, last week you accepted my challenge, so what do you want to do? And Bianca says, all right, Sasha, uh, I'll fight you at SummerSlam. And then Zelina, you, you'll get your shot uh, tonight. Estenoche. Tonight. I was trying to watch here their acceptance or something from the SBC. Oh, good. While you do research backstage, uh, Ray talks to Dom about the importance of building momentum heading into SummerSlam. They need that momentum. And so Dom has a match tonight against Jay Uso. And Dom says, because uh, Ray's like, hey, you know, I appreciate your help last week, even though I didn't need it. I'm like, bro, yeah, you did. And then Dom's like, okay, well, I won't let you down. And I don't need your help, Poppy. And They're then, totally breaking up if they lose a SummerSlam. They're going to feud. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Then send Dom to NXT. Have him grow his hair and become like a crazy. He should be like an entitled jerk. That's what he should be. He's yes. Like, Don't you know who my dad is? That's what his thing should be. Um, so we get Dom versus Jey Uso. Uh, whatever. Fine enough match. Dom hits a sun, uh, sliding sunset flip barricade bomb. As SmackDown rolls on. Yeah, those uh, are always cool to see. Those are always fun. And he's all long, too. It's, it's more fun when a little tiny guy like Ray does it. 
Uh, Dom hits a 619. He goes up top. And right as Jimmy is coming to, like, grab him or something, I didn't even see Ray. Ray came out of nowhere. He, like, jumped up, uh, leapt onto the, the stairs, the steel steps, and, uh, and took out oh, Jimmy. Yeah. I see you sent on with Greg. It came out of nowhere. <laughs> it came out of nowhere. Uh, and then Dom, like, looked at that and was like, oh, how about that? And then he did a splash, but he missed it because of the hesitation there. Uh, and then Jay ended up getting the upper hand and the splash of his own to win uh, there in that match. So, yeah, yep. good win yep. for Uso, Team Uso. Uh, after that, Edge, he's walking backstage. And then uh, I think her name's Megan, rolls up to him for an interview. Uh, he calls Seth the rotten, selfish bastards. Says the issues between the two of them go back further than a few weeks. So he says, here's my response to what Seth had to say last week. When Seth gets here, I'm going to show him what a kind of rotten, selfish bastard I can be. This is great, dude. A couple people are bringing up. Remember when they had the text on the screen, like the Usos, and it said lockdown? Yeah. Remember that? And they had like the yeah. promos where it was like just words on the screen. It's like, wh- yeah, what yeah. is happening? Why are you making me read right now? This is wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. That, oh, was, that was so, so bad. bad. That was, that was so, so bad. bad. So after that, we had our first of two championship contender matches. This one, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Apollo Crews. This was short. Uh, towards the end, Nakamura hits the GTS on Cruz, covers him, and the commander Aziz pulls Nakamura out of the ring. And so Nakamura boots Aziz, mm-hmm. uh, gets back in the ring, throws Apollo Cruz into Aziz, who at this point is on the apron. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Boogs start shredding Nakamura and him make their way up the ramp as uh, Boogs is solo into Nakamura's theme. It's really short. It ends in a DQ, so I'm sure we're going to get the same, the same thing again next week. I do appreciate you're absolutely right. We are. It's going to be another championship contender match. Dude. Absolutely. Um, uh, I do appreciate that Boogs is super over. Him and Nakamura are really over with the crowd. Like they really like that, and he's great out there. Um, it is. It's weird they have two guitar guys though. They kind of look like each other. Uh, anyways, <laughs> after the match. Like Elias says at this point, I'm like, I do not want to see Elias, but Boogs, I'm happy to see him. I want the other guitar guy. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, after, let's see, we had Kayla outside Roman's room, um, and she's waiting for an interview. Paul comes out, just annoyed. She said she wants to know his thoughts about what happened last week with the contract signing. He says, the contract. He said, uh, he said Cena, who's thieving air on the island of relevancy. That was a good line. Um, yeah, that was good stuff. He, uh, he says, you know, he thinks he can come down and he said, there's nothing legal about that contract. He says, if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I forget what he called them, uh, but something rude, uh, uh, signed Tom Brady for one more year for $75 million. If I showed up with a kendo stick and took him out and signed his contract, I wouldn't get that money. He says the contract is a joke. Pierce is letting Cena slide his way into a title shot he doesn't deserve. Roman has nothing to say to you or anyone. And as I'm sure you've heard before, he's not in the mood. And then he turns around and creepy Biggie is there with the briefcase. He really needs to, if they really want to do this and not have this just be goofy stuff, have him tease cash-ins, you know? know? Like if he's sort of teasing, escalate the situation. Don't be repetitive. Escalate the situation. You know, when Roman's exactly. out there and he gets sling bladed by Finn Balor, have Big E's music kicks in, kick in and then have him show up just on the Tron giggly or something like that. You know, escalate the yeah. situation. Or something more than just giggling, too. That I, I'll be honest with you. I think that he needs to cut that out. Like, I want to see him a bit more serious. I want to see him, you know, a bit more like, I don't know, sinister. Like, hey, this shit's real. Okay, this is going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, after that, we had Tamina versus Tegan Knox. Of course, Natalia is hurt. So uh, I think they said she'll be back in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, it's another short, relatively short match. Uh, the finish saw Tegan Knox missing a Shining Wizard. Uh, she eats a super kick. Tamina is setting up for a Samoa drop. And then Shotzi seemingly accidentally, at least that's the vibe I got, uh, shoots off the missile on her tank and it kind of whizzes by Tamina. That's enough of a distraction to allow Tegan to escape the Samoa drop. Then the rolls up to me to get the win. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, uh, we had Pierce and Sonya backstage. Selena Vega walks in. 
uh, she's like, hey, I want my title match, and I want it next. And Pierce says, well, we can't do a title match without some promotion, despite the fact they've had title matches that were just made on the spot. Just on the spot right now, happens right I now. Know. And then uh, Zelina says, Bianca's accepted my challenge twice. When am I getting my title match? And that's when Sonya says, well, we haven't ratified the contract. Plus, you don't make the matches around here. I do. Uh, Pierce then says, uh, well, if you beat Bianca tonight, earn your title match. Uh, and then if you win, you can get the winner of Bianca versus Sasha after SummerSlam. And Vega just says, well, I think Sasha's going to win at SummerSlam anyways, but I'll prove tonight that I can beat Bianca. Do they have anybody on the SmackDown women's roster who doesn't have, like, a losing record right now? I mean, this is the kind of thing that, like, rankings in AEW are really good for. Because, like, yeah, so they pad them on dark and elevation, but, like, they pad them on dark and elevation. They have wins. They have, like, wins. I know. Selena Vega should have zero claim to this. Even Liv Morgan. I looked up Liv Morgan's record. And it's like she has some wins lately. Going back the last, like, 15 matches, she actually has a losing record. But, mm-hmm. like, um, she has some wins. Where has she been? She actually has kind of a claim to Has she even really been on TV since Money the Bank? No, I don't think she's been on. I don't know if she's actually been on at all. That is so weird. It is, re- it is really You weird. have the story of her beating everybody else on the SmackDown side of things to get in Money the Bank. The crowd's really in to that story. They're they're cheering for her. She's getting good pops. Do you take that momentum and do something with it? I mean, you should. I mean, in her last... WWE, they don't. In they her keep her last, off TV for a month and a half. In her last... Yeah, I mean, in her last four singles matches, she's three and one. You know? And then and before that, she was in a tag team. So, like, yeah. on her current singles run, she has a very good record. She's three and one. Yeah. You know, yeah, AEW yeah. standards. That's like a number, you know, two or one in the ranking. Yeah, potentially yeah. doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make a lick of sense. Anyways, after that, we had Edge promo. Uh, actually, you're going to have to fill in for some of this because I, I had to step away from it early on. He says, uh, "I understand when Seth pops in, then you could you could be Seth, okay, or pipe, or you could take over." Uh, he says, "I understand that Seth isn't here tonight. In fact, he's nowhere near here." He says, "I don't blame him because if he were, what I would do to him would land me in jail." And Edge says he was willing to leave the past, the past, until Seth cost the universal title. He says, you know what? If the roles were reversed, I'd have done the same thing. Seth and I have a lot in common. Uh, and, he's, and when I look in Seth's eyes, he knows that this isn't going to end well for either of them. And if Seth were here, it would end tonight. And then live via satellite, we have Seth Rollins. I really actually like this promo. I think this is going to be a great match. And I, and I, I like mm-hmm. the chemistry between these two guys. And it's something new for Edge. Um, so yeah, Seth shows up. He says, yeah, the ultimate opportunist. You think you have it all figured out except last week when I smashed your face with a camera, you didn't see that coming, took a page out of your book. He says, you're right. We are similar. We're locked in this dance together, but that's where the similarities end. He says, if the ultimate opportunist were half the man I was, he would always know there's a plan B and Edge says, oh yeah, I know there's a plan B. I got a plan B. How about you and I one-on-one at SummerSlam? And Rollins says, whoa, cool your jets, man. I call the shots around here, not you. He says, let me think on it. And while I'm mulling it over, maybe you should think about it. What are you getting yourself into? You know what it's like to have my boot on the back of your neck. You know what happens when I stomp a healthy neck. What would happen if I stomp the neck of somebody who's had his neck fused not one, not two, but three times? Your comeback would be done, and I'm not sure what kind of future you're going to have as a husband or as a father. You've got three girls at home, and of course, Edge blows up and says, no, 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 don't you talk like that. Don't you you keep their names out of your mouth. He says, you keep circling back to me, Seth, but it never works, Seth. I helped eliminate you from the 2020 and 2021 Rumbles, all because you didn't finish the job in 2014. Uh, He says, when you had the chance, you're trying to walk in my steps, but you can't feel them because at the end of the day, you're Edge Light. And Ron's like, wah, wah. I'm not a light version of you. I'm better in every single way. You know it. You want me one on one? You're on. You got it. SummerSlam. Yeah, he called he call him Wish.com Edge. <laughs> he called him Dollar Store Edge. Yeah. Uh, after that, we got a Finn Balor interview. Uh, he talked about how he's close to signing the contract, the Universal title, till Baron stuck his nose where it didn't belong. And then Cena swooped in, signed the deal. It says Corbin has sunk this low. He should worry about his business and not Finn's. Says uh, if Baron can get back on his feet, he's got to learn about honor and integrity. 
and he's going to teach him some tonight. And after he's done with Corbin, oh, oh, I got a bone to pick with John Cena. Yeah. You hear Pat McAfee called Baron Corbin bum ass tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Pat McAfee's great. Uh, then we had the Street Profits versus the Dirty Dogs. Have the Street Profits been in front of a crowd since? Well, not obviously not the 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 Rolling Loud thing, but man, I forgot just how much they gel with crowds. It is so. Yeah, like, when they first got called up, there was crowds. Eh? No, no, no. I mean, since oh. since uh, Thunderdome's been uh, gone, I don't think so. No, because Montez I, has been out. Yeah, he's been out, right? It just this yeah. was sort of a refreshing because crowds are a bit more energetic these days now that they get to oh, yeah, come yeah, out yeah. and do stuff. And it was like, man, this is such a great refresher. So, anyways, uh, Montez, and this is a fun match. Uh, Montez gets the win on Dolph with the splash, just a massive splash. It's great. Oh yeah, that frog splash. It was, was great. huge. Uh, Bianca Belair after that had her championship contender match against uh, Zelina Vega. Uh, Bianca, of course, uh, uh, handling Zelina pretty easily here. Sasha comes out as they make their way to the outside of the ring. Sasha, uh, uh, so Bianca is like pressing Zelina, maybe to give her a press slam. Uh, and then uh, she sort of puts her on the apron, I think. Uh, and then Zelina takes advantage of Bianca being distracted by Sasha, gives her a Rana from the apron, rolls her back in, gets two with that, a SmackDown rolls on. Bianca takes back over afterwards, hit KOD for the win. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get Roman backstage. Heyman walks up to him and says, hey, Finn and Barrett is up next. Roman says, I'm interested. I'm interested. And then a little bit later is a rerun of Cops. Which one? An early episode with Sheriff John Bunnell. I'm interested. <laughs> I'm making popcorn, Tribal Chief. I don't like popcorn. <laughs> oh, it's all just either I'm interested, not interested. Or he just goes, pass. Pass. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we got uh, that match next, Balor versus Bumass Corbin. Uh, Baron asked for a mic to start things off this poor sack of shit. Said, hey, man, last week what happened wasn't cool, but... I'm desperate, man, so I apologize. I'm sorry, Balor says. Apology not accepted. <laughs> it's pow. A, Blast it's him. Pow. Bang. Uh, Balor this picked, is another short match, too. Yeah, it Balor like picks up long. that win pretty quickly with a coup de gras. <laughs> it was super quick, so yeah, yeah. And then uh, he calls for the mic because three years ago, what happened last week, I would just smile and accepted it. But that fit is dead. This Finn wants to face Roman for the Universal Championship. And if I got to go through Cena to do it, that's what I'm willing to do. Name the place, name the time, because this Finn, and then Roman's music hits. He starts making his way out, go to commercial. And by that point, Roman had just made it to the ring. Um, yeah, Roman says, uh, Heyman has already addressed his position when it happened last week. He says, Finn, I understand your frustrations. Finn. But you need to remember that I gave you an opportunity. So when you're on my show in my ring, keep my name out of your mouth. And then he chucks the mic at Finn's chest. Ooh, bad move. He turns to leave. Finn comes behind him and pushes him out of the ring. Shoves him. Gives, gives him the gun fingers. So then and the so, Usos, uh, yeah, the Usos attack him. The crowd starts chanting Cena, by the way. Uh, the Usos attack Finn from you're, you're at home chanting Cena, Cena. But no, the Usos attack I was Finn. chanting gun fingers, gun yeah. fingers. Uh, Gorilla's a destiny. Uh, they beat on Finn. Jimmy goes for a bad splash. Bad luck, foul <laughs> Carl Anderson. Finn trips up Jay into the line of fire, so he ends up taking the, the splash. He takes both the Usos out, and then he gets he gun fingers, and his aggressive hips go jutting out. Roman gets in, eats a sling blade. The Usos take out Finn again. Roman gives Finn a Superman punch. Uh, Uso splash from Jay. Ground and pound from Roman. And uh, he sort of puts his boot on his neck as, uh, as we leave SmackDown. Mm -hmm. SmackDown mm -hmm. closes out. No longer rolling on. Nope. That was SmackDown. That was your SmackDown. Can I, I answer a few questions? I'm going to open up this uh, Patreon QA thread here and see what people, see what comments All right. we got. There's only nine of them. Okay. All right. Uh, Josh Fields gifted a sub to Super Sonic Onyx and then Vegan Squirrel the sub. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vegan Squirrel. Uh, let's see here. 
Moses Opposa says, if, if Finn and Cena face off, could we see heel Finn come out a little bit more? I don't know. I think it'll probably just be sort of aggressive Finn, you know. Tweener Finn. Tweener Finn, yeah. Although if they're like, hey, we know the crowd is going to cheer the hell out of Cena. Um, I don't know. If they make it a really competitive match and, uh, and you know, they do the thing like with uh, Nakamura and Cena years ago, just maybe mm-hmm. a little bit longer and Finn wins, crowd will really be into it and he'll get the, the Cena rub. Cena rub. Mm-hmm. Uh, baseline Brandon with the sub. Thank you so much. Uh, Beasy757 with the sub too. Eddie Brock's Venom says, apart from wrestling shows, what TV shows do you watch when you need a break or you're not working? So at night, I watch Pluto TV's buzzer channel for match game, Hollywood Squares, and uh, classic concentration. It's good stuff. Yeah. I really don't watch TV much. Yeah. Uh, what happened to your piano? You used to have a piano instead of a TV. I still have a piano. Where'd it go? It's still in the house. It wasn't oh, there. It was on, it's there, in the right? wall. It, we moved it. It's in the over. wall. <laughs> it's in the wall now. We moved it up from that wall to the wall over by the TV. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, inch by inch get the TV and piano closer to one another, and hopefully they'll merge into piano TV. So I have both the things I wanted. Then you'll watch piano TV. That'd be awesome. Yes. That's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Luis Areza, how do you feel about guys? Uh, I'm sorry. How do you guys feel about wrestlers putting licensed music as an incentive in their contracts? Like CM Punk with Cult's personality. I think it's great. I think wrestlers should put everything they want in there if they can get it. Yep. Yep. You know? Yep. It's like, hey, what do you want for your Tron? Amaranth stream. <laughs> <laughs> I just like cracking you up with that. You do. I, I do. Uh, oh, Epico's in chat. <laughs> What's up, says Epico? Your, says your your boy made some money tonight. Drinks are on me. Well done. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Jorge D, what odd jobs will Corbin be doing in SummerSlam tour in, in order to make some money for all his bills? I'm going to be a valet. And then Nakamura and Boogs pulls up in his old car. But it's got like, you know, a bunch of filet fish wrappers in it from Boogs. He's going to get a job at catering. Yeah. And when no one's looking, he's going to try to sneak a piece of food, and then whoever his boss is is going to admonish him and then fire him for eating the goods. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, John Elite says the match between Charlotte and Nikki on Monday made no sense. It went from a contenders match to a title match. That's what I heard. I didn't notice that people were saying that uh, Apparently uh, the ref hold, held, held the up, title yeah. up like a title match. That's weird. Uh, let's see. Night by night. What SmackDown superstar would most enjoy the taste of a crisp, clean, no caffeine seven up? Am I to assume the night by night is in fact drinking a seven up when he wrote this? <clears throat> Question for another. I think day, I, I think Baron would probably really enjoy a seven up right now because soda is probably a luxury for him at this juncture. He's drinking like toilet water at this point. Yeah. Yeah. He's drinking. I from, think a flat a flat seven up would be enough because for him. they had to turn off all the fountains because of COVID. Where am I going to get water? Oh, there is a toilet. <laughs> I'll drink some toilet water. Hmm. <laughs> Disgusting. The uh, Shane's birthday tweet. Do you think AEW's open door and willing to work with other companies will stop them from having a bloated roster like WWE did when they hoarded talent? I think AEW not electing to hoard talent is going to stop them from keeping uh, from having a bloated roster. But yeah, that's a good point too. Is that when yeah. you can bring in other people from other companies, that would prevent them from having um that yeah. that that. Uh, oh wow, Adam Beveridge, can we confirm whether or not Nick Khan was a wrestler in the 90s because he's going after HBK and Triple H's guys like he got buried by the click? Oh man, yeah. He's uh, he's actually Shane Douglas in uh, in disguise. <laughs> uh, the Brigoli, I work at Sam's Club and I ask for the card, I make the emote of the Dark Order really on instinct. What is a wrestling thing you found you did or are doing? I use the word shoot a lot. Yeah, same. You know. Oh, is that a shoot? And then so whoever I'm talking to is like, what? Or kayfabe. Oh, so yeah, something, kayfabe. Something, or, something yeah. or another was kayfabe. Oh, did he kayfabe that? What, did he what? Sorry, did he make it up? Uh, the Mighty Mushi, what do you think NXT should do to beef up Dynamite since Rust is gone and since Rough is gone as well? They can't just shift the Diamond in the Rust phrase to him. Can't be Diamond in the Rough. They're going to need, uh, I mean, he he served as a job guy. 
like in the in the limited sample size, you know that we got. He was the he didn't he job to Bob Fish or Kushida, who did? Uh, Tyler Rust. Yeah, it was it was Bob Fish, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so you're gonna need another job guy. Be a uh, uh oh, who's that dude who was in the tall guy in the breakout tournament? Andre something. Andre Chase. Yeah, that guy. Okay. He can be the job guy. Uh, Chief Frog Slat says, Larson, let me get a Stardust impression. It's the highlight of a wrestling-related entertainment movie. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, let's see here. Oh, wow. Fear and loathing. You guys get a phone call from Adam Cole's agent. He says, Adam is one hour away from Sacramento, has 15 minutes to meet both you guys when he arrives. Do you tell his manager this must be a mistake, or do you scramble to get a presentation and offer ready? Offer oh, for what? An offer to join going in raw? Mm, I don't want to add somebody else. I like I, I prefer doing it with you and the enforcer. <laughs> like, can we just get like an interview with the guy? Can yeah. you, can you do another chat him up a little bit? Can you do an intro for the show if he's AEW and then also if he's WWE? Say, hey, this is AEW's Adam Cole, and you're watching w, uh, going in raw. Going in and raw. Then, okay, take two now for WWE. Hey. Well, it's gonna be three. This is it's gonna be four actually. This is AEW's Adam Cole. This is NXT's Adam Cole. This is Monday Night Raw's Adam Cole. This is Friday Night Snack, SmackDown. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jorge D, another thoughtful question: Which wrestler would you invite out to a nice restaurant, and then at the end of the enjoyable meal, they would say, "Oh man, I just noticed that I forgot my card, my other wallet. You got this tonight, right? I'll pay you back. Don't worry." You gotta take Baron out of that. That's gotta take Baron experience. out of that. Who was at that table? I think shockingly. Cesaro, have you ever noticed that his suits really aren't that nice? I'm going to say Cesaro. He was at that Applebee's in that commercial, so we know he likes cheap, shitty chain food. I'm going to say I'm going to say Robert Roode because a I think he he'd think it's funny because he's in character he's a jerk. He's yeah. B you notice he's not even wearing suits anymore. Oh, so apparently yeah. he's making less money on the main roster than he was in NXT. He's a bum ass. Yeah, he's not wearing suits. He doesn't have the robes anymore. Maybe he had to sell those. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, no real robes. You're right. Yeah, he had to sell those things. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Dang MQ says another great suit tonight from Seth Rollins. That was oh. a nice suit. Did The Rock confirm that he showered? Muted Mayday said The Rock confirmed that he showered. Does it change your opinion on Jake Gyllenhaal? That he says he naturally cleans himself. I mean, that, you got to be specific about naturally. Yeah, I don't think he was. I don't think he was specific. He just said he doesn't bathe, which I take as not showering either. Yeah, that's what how I would. That's how I would interpret that as well. Mm-hmm, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the memes for the memes on Twitter are great. Uh, yeah, it sort of knocks him down a peg. If you're gonna do weird shit, man, I don't want to know about it. You know, uh, Doctor Lipkin with Daniel Bryan gone for foreseeable future. Who is going to take his place on the stream overlay banner? Who? Who's that? Wait, who? Daniel Bryan. Once he once he shows up in AEW, you have to take that render off there and replace. Well, him no, the somebody. thing is, he's got an AEW shirt on. That's true. He's got an AEW shirt on. He could stay then. He could stay. RTG, yeah. you're offered a job to clean all the championship belts on SmackDown. What SmackDown superstar do you get advice from to clean the belts? Uh, Enforcer? Because he cleaned the... Uh, he no, cleaned... no, no, SmackDown superstar. SmackDown superstar. Enforcer's on on SmackDown? Be cool if he I'd was. I'd see him tonight. He'd be <laughs> awesome if He's he in was. catering, dude. <laughs> I'd ask Roman because I don't think he would walk out of his locker room unless that universal title looked, you know, yeah, probably super polished. Probably want to ask Heyman then. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that dude, he'll, he'll give you a Superman punch if you ask him how to do a scrub task like that. Anyways, that's going to do it for us. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Twitch chat, stick around. We're going to raid somebody. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs>